scientists have now discovered what the ancients already knew, that the third dimension is a hologram of what the ancients or sages would call sleep, uh, dream world or dreamy world or sleepy time. And that we were a mere shadow of a higher dimension. Okay, this is an ancient text, guys. And now we have modern science confirming what ancient sages, texts, and tablets have said for eons, for millennia. Let's take a look at what science has to say about this dimension. Also has a pattern, but it isn't periodic. So it's not a crystal. But there's a deep connection between the 2D object on the sand and the 3D mother crystal. This distorted 2D pattern is called a quasi-crystal. A quasi-crystal in a certain dimension, in this case 2D, is a projection of a crystal in a higher dimension, in this case 3D. A group of physicists in Los Angeles is working on a new physics theory for a particular 8D crystal. Yep, that's right. An eight-dimensional crystal is projected to 4D at a very particular angle, which forms a 4D quasi-crystal. And from this 4D quasi-crystal, they derive a 3D quasi-crystal, which they believe is the fundamental substructure of all of reality. Okay, guys, there you go. <clears throat> Important to understand these multi-dimensional crystals because when you get into Merkaba, talk and you're talking about portals and wormholes and stargates, <clears throat> you're talking about um, an using angles to enter into other dimensions. All dimensions are in angles of each other. Right now, <clears throat> we're in an 11-dimensional universe. We have 11 dimensions in this universe or it would collapse on itself. The structure of this universe is made of 11 dimensions. Now, each dimension, people think of dimensions as something being so far away. Each dimension is stacked right on top of each other, literally so close that they're touching. And the only, diff the only thing that keeps you from entering into another dimension is your frequency. If your frequency doesn't match that dimension, you cannot enter it, okay? You can't phase shift from the third dimension into the fourth dimension. However, from higher dimensions, it appears that it's easier to phase shift down into uh, uh, thicker densities, which is incredible. But from the third dimensional platform that we are, we can't move up as easy. It takes a great level of knowledge, understanding, and frequency and vibration to move up, or technology, which we're gonna talk about shortly, as the ancients had the same technology that I'm gonna show you. Um, now it's easy for us to move down, just like it's easy for them, for them to come from higher to lower dimensions, it's the same for us. We can easily get into the second dimension. You can, you can see that just as plain and simple by drawing something on a piece of paper or creating a two-dimensional structure inside of a computer and, uh, and observing it from every angle. And then even going down to one dimension, just drawing lines. We have the ease of going down dimensions, but the, the hard part is ascension. Moving up, that's where the hard part is. Uh, Merkaba meditation is designed to move you up dimensions, in which we're gonna do an actual guided Merkaba meditation at the end of this presentation, coming up very soon, okay? Also, <clears throat> Merkaba, also spelled Merkaba, translates literally to light, spirit, body. The Merkaba symbol is a, uh, is a shape made of two intersecting tetrahedrons that spin in opposite directions. Counter-rotating star tetrahedron is what you're going to be getting inside of, creating a three-dimensional energy field. And this energy field is a vehicle of ascension utilized to take people from one place to another or one dimension to another as well. And this is what the ancients used it for, the Merkaba light en energy vehicle. It's talked about ancient times tremendously. Remember, what, where does the power source come from? Remember we talked about this earlier? 3.75, uh, 37.5 trillion cells in your body, each cell generating 0 0.07 volts of electricity, creating a total of 2.63 trillion volts of electricity in the human body. Remember that? That's your power source for your Merkaba. We have the seed of life, six circles around in the seventh. Here's a cross section of human DNA. Look familiar? <laughs> yeah. 
This is inside of you. This is what you're made of. You are made up of Merkava technology, this avatar body that you're operating. And also this flower of life pattern, it emanates and perme permeates the entire universe and all biological entities. This is the mitosis that we're talking about that was described by Noah's one and two <clears throat> by Thoth. Let's take a look here. This pattern is the most balanced and optimum form of the eight spheres existing in direct connection with each other. The reason why it is called the egg of life is because nature uses this form in the embryonic creation process of every single living organism on this planet, with no exception. Okay, there you have it, guys. <clears throat> Real science. You can see here in the mitosis, the migration from a single sphere to multiple spheres and how they organize themselves into this pattern, this pattern here, the flower of life pattern eventually, which houses a 64 grid tetrahedron that we're gonna talk about. <clears throat> this pattern is the most balanced. Okay. What is the light language? An explanation of light language by Von Perry. Light language symbols on drum light is information that contains the codes of creation. Remember what we talked about in the first half of this workshop that lights create a uh, photon, photonic light and radiation, which is also a form of light, create physical matter, create physical reality. <clears throat> Geometry is the foundational structure for art, science, music, and architecture. Its images, codes, and shapes are found in DNA, crystals, atoms, mandalas, hieroglyphs, and pyramids. The language of light is a sacred geometry produced by vibration. Light language is a powerful sacred gift, that purposeful expression of love from the creator, okay? So this is what we're talking about, tapping into this Merkaba light frequency energy and utilizing it to help manifest, utilizing it to guide us, utilizing it to get into deeper meditations, and also even utilizing it to understand how to exercise the power that's already inside of us. And it operates off of these specific um, frequencies called cymatics. The universe has a toroid surrounding it that is where you meet to the exterior edges of the universe. It's this toroidal energy flow that moves up, out, and in uh, uh, with this uh, flow of galaxies and the movement of planets and everything else in through this system. The same thing happens down to uh, on the um, avatar body level. You have this same exact flow happening coming out of your heart and then encompassing about 12 feet away from your body. Some people can project up to even 20 feet away creating this toroidal energy field. We see this field on everything. This is what you really look like. That is, if you could see the energy field that surrounds your body, the shape of this innate energy field forms a torus. And it is a preferred shape that the universe uses to create matter from energy. The universe uses to create matter from energy. Take a look at the picture. Uh, and observe the similarities of structure in the tree, orange, tomato, dividing cells, the Earth's magnetic, magnetic belts, and the shape of the galaxies themselves. You see here, the Merkaba and this star tetrahedron is prevalent throughout the entire universe. This energy field, this source energy, this star tetrahedron that creates this flow, this toroidal flow, exists everywhere and virtually in almost everything. We talked about this earlier, the toroidal structure of the human energy field being mapped out. This is uh, by the uh, Institute of Heart Math. Your field uh, is your, uh, you know, is what you're going to get into. Really, your star tetrahedron operates within that field, and it can even interact with others as well, as we talked about earlier in the, uh, in the workshop. <clears throat> so let's look here. History has talked about the Merkaba mostly as a vehicle that allows a person to ascend or descend into the higher or lower worlds. But actually, the Merkaba is much more than just a vehicle of ascension. It can be really anything, okay? <laughs> it can be anything, since it is a primal pattern that created all things in all universes, both visible and invisible. In the Bible, there is a reference to Ezekiel and the wheels by which Ezekiel ascended into heaven. In the Torah, there's a reference to the Merkava, which is spelled in Hebrew, that's why it's spelled in Hebrew, which has two different meanings. One meaning it's a chariot, and the other one is a vehicle. The other is the throne of God. So when the two definitions are combined, the true meaning comes to life. In ancient Egypt, the primal pattern was called the Merkava, 
Uh, and basically, it was actually the three worlds, not one. Mer meant kind of a light that rotated within itself. Ka meant spirit. And in this case, referring to the human spirit. And Ba meant the human body. Though it uh, could mean the concept of reality that the spirit holds. And so the entire world in ancient Egypt referred to the rotating light that would take the spirit body from one world to another. Ironically, the atomic structure of gold is the uh, geometric shape of the star tetrahedron, AKA the Merkaba, okay? Let's take a look at that. This is gold right here, okay? You're looking at the atomic structure of gold, AU, on the periodic table of elements. You see its structure? <laughs> Pretty interesting that the Anunnaki came here to mine gold, mine this planet for gold. They were literally mining Merkabas, is what they were mining. Interesting. The Star of David. Uh, a lot of people who uh, believe in the Jewish faith, they walk around with the Star of David and they believe it's because they're God's chosen people. When you go deeper into the history of the Star of David, you discover it's really about a star tetrahedron, the Merkaba, coming out of Africa. And it has nothing to do with God's being a God's chosen person or a star in the sky, to be actually honest with you. The Star of David in Hebrew, Magen David, which is Shield of David, again also spelled Mogen, Jewish symbol composed of two overlaid equilateral triangles that form a six-pointed star. It appears on synagogues, Jewish tombstones, and the flag of the State of Israel. The symbol, which historically was not limited to use by Jews, originated in antiquity. Originally not used by Jews. Originated in antiquity. When side by side with the five-pointed star, it served as a magical sign for a decoration. In the Middle Ages, the Star of David appeared with greater frequency among Jews, but did not assume any special religious significance. It's found as well on some medieval cathedrals. The term Magen David, which is Jewish liturgy, which uh, signifies God as a protector or the shield of David, gained currency among medieval Jewish mystics who attached magical powers to King David's shield, just as earlier non-Jewish magical traditions had referred to the five-pointed star as the seal of Solomon. Kabbalists popularized the use of the symbol as a protection against evil spirits. The Jewish community of Prague was the first to use the Star of David as its official symbol. And from the 17th century, one six-pointed star became the official seal of many Jewish uh, communities and the general sign of Judaism. Though it has no biblical or tal uh, Talmudic authority, the star was almost universally adopted by Jews in the 19th century as a striking uh, and simple emblem of Jew Judaism in imitation of the cross of Christianity. The yellow badge which Jews uh, were forced to wear in Nazi uh, you know, Germany occupied Europe and invested the Star of David uh, with a symbolism indicating martyrdom and heroism. So you see this evolved over time. It started off as a Merkaba star tetrahedron, a vehicle of ascension, uh, an energy field that allowed you to transform or, or travel from one dimension or one place consciously to another. And then much later, it turned into religion and it turned into from an energy field to, uh, you know, an energy shield and a protector and so forth and so on. Uh, but it's much, much more than that. Much, much more than that. So, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of people wearing this don't really know what they're wearing or even how to access or use it. Uh, this as above, so below slide, it shows the electron orbiting a nucleus of an atom. And literally, it mimics, obviously, a solar system orbiting, uh, planets orbiting a sun in a solar system, as above, so below. This actually was a misplaced slide, but a good thing to touch on. We saw gold on the periodic table of elements, the AU already. It has a form of shape of a Merkaba. Uh, we're looking here at the Jed Pillar Ankh, okay, as we're moving into talking about Stargate technology and how this all interacts in getting into the Merkaba. We look at the Ankh and, you know, we say, oh, wow, this is a cool symbol, meaning of life and energy, life force and birth and creation. Yes, it has all of that as well. In more modern times, just as the Star of David evolved into uh, an unknown symbol that has been misprioritized, same thing happened with the Ankh. It's now jewelry, it's, you know, it's uh, earrings, it's necklaces and everything else. And, yeah, it's cool. I mean, but 
the true meaning has been hidden for eons. It has several meanings, actually. So here's the Ankh, the comedic womb of mankind, representing the uterus. Uh, so you see the uterus, the womb of life, the sunset and the sunrise, uh, the fallopian tubes, the vaginal canals, which is a portal of life, okay? This is uh, one representation of the Ankh that it has, one purpose that it actually has and one meaning that it has. But there's also more. By the way, the uterus became the penis and the ovaries became the scrotum because all life in, for humans and homo sapiens begins as female. So all people on this planet start off as female. And then depending on what happens with your chromosomes, you will uh, invert your, uh, your vagina becomes inverted and your vaginal canal becomes the penis and uh, your ovaries become the scrotum, so forth and so on. But just interesting, so just, guys walking around, we're all walking around with inverted ovaries, uh, and inverted uh, vaginas, really strange. But uh, here's the technology, guys. So here's evidence of technology in the ancient past. You see uh, a jet pillar holding up uh, what looks like to be a light bulb. 